When the economy gets tough and we are heading for a recession, doubling down on your niche might feel really counterintuitive. After all, surely if we are more of a generalist and we can target our, our services to a wider audience, surely that's a safer way of winning new business. Well, I'm here to say no, that is absolutely not true. In fact, the opposite is true. The more you double down on your niche, the more easy it will be for you to find your audience and more importantly for them to find you. And of course, you will be seen as the specialist, not the generalist. And as the specialist, people will want to buy from you. And of course, that means you can charge higher fees as well. So in this week's episode, I want to rewind and play you a previous episode that we did right back at the beginning when we launched the podcast, all about niching. And my guest, David Miles, talking about how niching has really helped his agency grow and flourish and continue to flourish so let's jump in and let's rewind all the way back to 2020. Accelerate your agency's profitable growth with tools tips and value added interviews with your host agency owner and coach Rob DeCosta. So good morning everybody I am super excited to have David Miles, who is the MD of the PPC machine. Now, David's been helping thousands of companies market themselves online since 2003. So he has an awful lot of advice and no doubt lots of experience of how the industry has changed over the last 20 years to share with us today. So welcome aboard, David. Great to be here and uh, uh, looking forward to doing it. So do you just want to give us a little quick snapshot of yourself and your background and what led you to start your own your own agency? Yes. Well, basically, as you said, back in about 2003, I was uh, is when I started uh, learning online marketing and getting involved in that. And that was through necessity, really, in that I was running a business of my own um, in the financial services sector and we needed to to market ourselves more effectively. And it was through that that I learned about things like uh, Google AdWords, as it was called then, and SEO and building basic websites and landing pages and things. And over the years, that kind of morphed into uh, setting up a, an agency and doing those same things for other people. So I guess you've seen an awful lot of change in the technology and the way all of this stuff works in the last, what is it, 17 years? Yes. Uh, I mean, I, I saw certainly on the, there's been a lot of change on the SEO side. Uh, SEO used to be uh, really quite basic compared to what it is now. You could get away with doing the kind of very old school things like just stuffing keywords into pages and things. And Google, of course, has got a lot, lot cleverer and more sophisticated over the years, uh, both in terms of the way it um, ranks pages and in the kind of results it delivers to users. And there's also been a lot of changes on the on the pay per click side, on the on the Google AdWords or as it's now called Google Ads side of things. So everything from it now being a lot more competitive. You know, back back 15, 16 years ago, you the cost per click was was much lower because there were less people using it. Uh, but equally, there's been lots of things added to the lots of features added to the system, so you can now do a lot more with it than than you could back then. So yeah, lot, lots of changes. They tend to they tend to bring in new things sort of every every few months, every year. So you you don't necessarily notice it at the time, but when you then look back from from this point, you think, wow, actually, yeah, it's it's now a lot lot different from what it was seventeen years ago. Sure, and and we all band around the word PPC when we're talking about this. So can you give us a kind of quick definition of how you would describe what PPC means to to us business owners? Yeah. So at its most basic level, it stands for pay per click. And not as some people think I'm saying, sometimes paperclip, if I speak too quickly. <laughs> so that, um, and that's because it's um, that describes the kind of advertising model. So if you think about most kind of old school advertising, like putting an advert in a magazine or a poster at the railway station, with that, you're paying for the impression, you're paying for the advert to appear. Whereas with anything that's a paperclip model, you don't pay for your advert to appear. You only pay if someone actually clicks on your ad and does the desired action like going through to your to your website and uh, so what that means is if it if it's done correctly it's actually a far more efficient form of advertising because you're only paying if someone you know, does some kind of response to your ad and shows some kind of interest in it whereas with with the the, the old-fashioned paper paper impression uh, kind of advertising you know if you put an advert in your local newspaper and after a week it had no response at all 
you'd still have had to pay for that. Whereas with pay-per-click, you only pay if you get some kind of response. Right, excellent. That's a good definition. So we're all looking for really effective ways to market our businesses and to generate new hot prospects. So how how do you feel that agencies can use PPC to help generate new business for them? Well, I think there are broadly two ways on that. The, there's the direct approach where you you take advantage of the fact that PPC systems like Google Ads are very good for focusing in on the people who are ready to take action now. Um, you know, someone who is actually sitting down at Google typing in a search term, you know, they, they are ready to do something at the moment. Now, it might not be that they're ready to buy something, but they're ready to do something, whether that's buy something, find some information, talk to somebody. So the direct approach that agencies and you know a lot of other businesses could take is they could focus in on people who are actively searching for a marketing agency or a creative agency or whatever whatever kind of agency they are and make sure that when when someone searches for that their advert is one of the ones that appears now that that's the way of targeting if you like the warmest prospects um, but it's also the most one of the most expensive ways because you're you're bidding on keywords which have a have a high value uh, the right. other approach that can be taken is to is to go for uh, lower cost keywords where people are more in the kind of research phase so they might be searching for things like um, how do I get more people to my website or how do I attract more clients to my agency and those kind of um, problem based kind of searches now someone who's typing that kind of thing in isn't probably going to want to engage an agency at this stage they're probably you know not that far down the funnel but you could use Google Ads around those kind of search terms which have a lower cost per click, bring people onto your website, but rather than then trying to sell them something, just get them into your funnel with, with some kind of lead magnet or something like that so as you can then do nurture them via email marketing over the next few weeks or months until they are ready to buy. And the, the theory goes that then you know, when they are ready to buy, it's you that they're going to come back to rather than someone else because you're the one who's been giving them useful information um, and offering them value over the last few weeks. Brilliant. Yeah. So as my audience knows, I'm a big proponent of building your mailing list and the fact that your mailing list is one of your most valuable assets and that if you keep keep it warm by sending value added content to that list, then eventually you will um, be able to sell to them when they are ready to buy. And so what you're saying is that you can use PPC for that top of the funnel activity to get people to join your list and then use your email sequences to nurture them so that they're there when when they are ready to buy from you. Exactly. Yes, I'm saying yes. So you can do that or you can you can go for the bottom of the funnel with PPC, but that will be more expensive. Um, but so it depends whether you want quick results but expensive clicks or whether you want to put more people into your funnel with a lower cost per click, but accept that it will take longer. Or, of course, you could do a combination of the two. So people are focused on doing all sorts of marketing activities, such as SEO and other kind of lead generation activities. Where do you feel that PPC fits in as part of that marketing mix? I think PPC should always be part of the mix. There are a lot of times I hear people say, oh, I'll do... I'll run Google Ads and do PPC until my SEO kicks in and then I'll stop doing the stop doing the PPC. I think in an ideal world you should always be be doing both because they've each got their pros and cons. Uh, the you know, SEO, obviously the big advantage of SEO is that you're not paying for every single click. The downside to it is it it takes a while to build up. You know, even if you start SEO today, it's going to take you three to six months to see any results. And, but the the beauty of it is it's you know it's it's sustainable. Whereas with pay per click, if the moment you stop paying for it, you stop getting traffic from it. But the benefits of pay per click are uh, you can go after usually a wider range of search terms. You'll appear higher up in the Google search results because the paid ads always appear above the organic results. And there's also there's also been studies done that show that if you appear in both the paid results and in the organic results not only are you getting more exposure because you're on page one of Google twice, but actually being in the paid results at the top can actually increase the number of clicks that you get on your organic results because a lot of times people will search for something, they'll see you at the top in the paid results and they won't click because they're still skimming down the page. Then they'll see you in the organic results 
And because that's now the second time that they've seen you, subconsciously there's a kind of reinforcement effect, so it increases the chance that they're going to click on that organic result. So the two the two can work together in you know in more ways than people perhaps at first realise. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting point. It's about that sort of rule of seven that we have to you know hit somebody seven times with our content before they'll actually engage with us. And you just sort of discussed that there's two ways of making that happen. And I guess this is a conversation around time or money. I mean, we all either have time to try and implement these things ourselves, or we have money to outsource the services. And the thing about SEO and PPC, of course, is that people really need to know what they're doing. I mean, I, I you know, I dabbled around with SEO myself until the point when I realized, I, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing and some of the technical aspects of it. I could actually screw my website up if I'm trying to do it myself. So I end up outsourcing it. So I guess this is a sort of time or money. We either have time to invest, to learn and do this ourselves. And of course, we need to do it consistently or we have money to outsource it to somebody who is an expert like yourself. That's right, yes. And bear in mind, because if, if you're outsourcing SEO, even if you outsource it to someone really, really good, they're not going to get instant results because, you know, of the way Google works, it will take it will take several months. Whereas with with PPC, whether you're doing it yourself or you're outsourcing it, one of the beauties of it is it's instant traffic. So if you set up a Google Ads campaign from scratch now, then, you know, within a couple of hours, you're going to have people seeing your ad, clicking it and coming through to your website. Yeah, really good point. I mean, the SEO company I'm working with told me that I really shouldn't expect any significant results for six to nine months. So um, that, you know, if we not who I'm not sure any of us want to wait that long to see return on investment. So that is a really big kind of um, cheer for why we should be investing in PPC. And I guess this brings me on to the question of why should why would you recommend that people should outsource this service to a specialist agency like yourself rather than trying to do it themselves well i think there's there's a couple of reasons firstly you know it's not a lot of people don't want to get involved in doing this kind of thing themselves um but also there's the argument that says even if it's something that you would like to do and want to get involved in is that actually the best use of your time you know if you're a if you're a highly skilled I don't know, lawyer, for example, what's the best use of your time? Is it going out, uh, giving legal advice to people and charging how many hundred pounds an hour for that? Or is it trying to get your head around running a Google Ads campaign? And I think I, I think with something like Google Ads, it's something that anyone can learn if they want to. But the question is, is that really actually the best use of their time? And also there's the issue that if you if you do it yourself and do it wrong, then it can actually end up costing you a lot of money. And that's one of the biggest issues I find with with um, people who've tried Google Ads. They're often very against it and very anti it because they tried it themselves once and spent a lot of money and got nothing back. And that's that's because, and this, this maybe sounds a bit cynical, but Google make it very easy for basically anyone to set up their first Google Ads campaign. But they also make it so that if you accept all the default settings, you're probably going to set up a campaign which puts more money in Google's pocket than it does in yours. Right, yeah. And and the thing I was going to say was that, of course, it's not just about having the time to learn how to do this and set it up, but probably as importantly, it's having the time to constantly monitor and manage, look at the dashboard, look at the metrics and amend your uh, your advertising as appropriate based on those metrics. And I'm not sure any of us really have the time to do that, except for specialists who do it all day long. Yeah, definitely. And that's that's actually another common misconception is that people think you can set up a Google Ads campaign and then walk away and leave it. And in some in some sectors, yeah, you can do that, but you're never going to get the best results from that. Because when you when you set up a a pay per click campaign at the outset, you're doing it based on best practice and what you believe ought to work the best. But you can never be certain what the best strategy is until you start getting data back and seeing, you know, this keyword performs better than that one or this advert is getting more clicks than this one. And then you make changes based on that. So you're always evolving it and testing and measuring new strategies, or at least, you know, you are if you want to be getting the best possible return on investment from it. And yeah, if you've got competitors who are doing that kind of constant improvement and you're not, then you're the one who's going to end up paying over the odds or not getting the results from it. 
Yeah, and just to reinforce the point you made about is it best use of someone's time, I tell all of my clients and my audience all the time that you should f- focus on doing the things that only you can do and look at ways of delegating those other things. And um, those other things in this case would be PPC AdWords management because is it really the best use of your time and there's always ways of delegating and because I know some of my audience will be sitting here thinking yeah but I can't afford you know to hire someone but actually you know we can use uh, people in a freelance capacity we can hire people from Upwork or even Fiverr we can use VAs who have specialisms in this as well as of course using companies like yourselves the PPC machine who can manage the whole campaign so there's always ways of outsourcing that and making sure that we are spending our time doing the things that only we can do and the things that are genuinely going to move our agencies forward. I was going to say don't forget as well that when we talk about delegating it doesn't necessarily have to be outsourcing externally. You know, some of the some of the clients I've worked with they they've delegated the uh, the Google Ads and the other digital marketing to some to an employee um, and maybe it's a, a fairly junior employee who has a bit of knowledge of this stuff, but they can then be supported by an external trainer or coach to you know to develop them. So there's it doesn't have to be totally outsourced. You can delegate internally as well, and if necessary, get me or someone like me to provide external support to them. Yeah, and so I think on that note, I understand that you do kind of a done for you service, but you also do a provide a done with you service. So that would be you know outsourcing the whole management to you but also or using you to coach someone like you just described a junior person in-house to give them some expertise and transfer some of your knowledge to them yeah and that i think that that works the nice thing with that is it it allow it's obviously cheaper than paying someone externally to do the whole thing for you but also you're providing training to a member of staff you're developing someone's skill set and it, it there's transference of knowledge as well so you know whether the person who's being coached on it you know is obviously getting better at doing it all the time um and you've got the advantage you've got the best of both worlds in a way because you've got the person working in the business who really really understands what the company is about and what their products and services are about but still with the support of an external expert with you know have many years experience of doing this stuff yeah perfect and i think in um in my marketplace my clients marketplace we are all in a very competitive space so we might be running a web company or a digital agency or even a ppc agency and we are competing with a lot of a lot of other people doing the same thing so to put to win that battle on uh, AdWords is probably going to cost a lot of money unless you really know what you're doing and you're constantly looking at those numbers. Yes, it is. I mean, I I have this issue myself, obviously being being predominantly a PPC agency. If I, the people that I am competing with on Google Ads are also all experts in Google Ads. And so there's far less, um, op- you know, there's far less chance to say, oh, look, there's a missed opportunity. I'll exploit that because no one else has done because you're up against a lot of other people who all know how to do it too um but that's where things like thinking about different strategies like the thing of one well, rather than trying to get the bottom of the funnel stuff let's get some more of the top funnel stuff where it's cheaper and, and nurture them through you know it's still it's still possible then to compete with with people who've got huge budgets yeah and this is why guys you need to make sure that ppc is one aspect of the marketing mix because if you are using it to generate leads at the top of the funnel those are people who are your ideal target customer but may not be ready to buy and may not be very aware of who you are then you absolutely have to use that in conjunction with your email marketing with your content outreach so that you're nurturing that audience so that you're building that no like trust with them so that when they are ready to buy they remember who you are and you have to do that consistently i i say all the time that if you have a hundred ideal target customers today probably only one of those hundred is ready to buy from you so what are you doing with the other 99 to make sure that you are still front of their mind when they are ready to buy and this is a mistake that a lot of people make i'm sure you see it from a ppc perspective they may generate ppc may generate some leads but if the client doesn't convert those leads immediately into customers they may come back to you and say well hey these aren't good enough quality well that's not really the case is it exactly and the what people tend to overlook as well is the fact that not not everyone who visits their website is 
you know, is the same kind of person or the same quality in terms of, you know, whether they're warm or cold prospects and they have to be treated differently. There's a, in fact, there's a, an article on my website, a case study from a client I worked with a couple of years ago where they were, they were running a dental practice and prior to getting involved with me, they'd only ever worked off the basis of referrals. So everyone who rang them up had been recommended to them and was a reasonably warm, warm prospect. Once they started doing uh, pay-per-click advertising, of course, they got lots of calls from people who'd never heard of them and were shopping around a bit. And one of the things that I got them to do was very much to change their approach to how they dealt with those people um, and you know, to show them how to move the conversation away from just being about how much does a treatment cost to actually doing something to get them into the building, get them a, you know, a free assessment uh, but you know, having to treat them differently because they were at a different stage in the funnel, and I think that's that's something that often when people don't have success with with PPC or any other kind of digital marketing, it's often because they've forgotten that these people are perhaps different from the, from the people that they're getting through other channels, and they just need to be be followed up with in a different way that's that's appropriate. Yeah, so I'll, we'll put a link to that case study in the show notes because that is really interesting. And guys, this is all about no like, trust. This is about getting people to know you, getting people to like you, and then trusting you before they buy from you. And if you think about a dentist, that's definitely the case because you're not going to have your your tooth removed or your root canal surgery from someone that you don't trust so we have to take our potential customers through that no like trust journey and depending on where they enter your your sales funnel kind of tells you what you need to do next and that's that whole nurturing process before we i want to move on to one other topic in a moment david about niching but before we do that can you look into a I don't know if you can gaze into a crystal ball because obviously the industry you're working in is really fast changing. And as we said, over the last 17 years, you've seen a ton of change, get more sophisticated and more co- and more competitive. What's coming up in, in the next the next year or so? Have you got any insight into that, how the industry is going to change? Always, always dangerous to try and make predictions. I think, I think what we'll see having more and more of an impact is something that's been happening to an extent already is as... As Google gets more and more intelligent in terms of understanding people's searches, that's going to continue to have an impact on uh, not just what kind of people rank on page one of Google, but actually whether they get clicks through to their site. So we've already started to see this with a lot of the time now, if you search for something, you'll you'll be able to get the answer from Google without actually clicking through to someone's website. So that might be the knowledge graph results on the right hand side. You know, so if you go back a few years, if you Googled um, what's the capital of France, Google would just give you a load of websites that you could go to to get that answer. If you type that same query into Google now, what's the capital of France, it will just put a box up on the right hand side of the search telling you that that's that the capital is Paris and giving you lots of information about it. So you now don't need to click through to someone's website. Um, also, you get the the featured snippets. So if you search for something now, very often, there'll be a list of common questions and you can just click on that and expand it and see it on the, on the search results page. So I think the change I can see continuing to happen is as Google introduced more and more of these kind of features, people are going to start finding that even if they're on page one of Google, they're actually getting less traffic because more and more of the information people want can actually be found without leaving um, the Google page. Right. So I guess that means people have got to get smarter and smarter about what they're hoping Google will rank them for and what what copy that Google puts onto those search result pages as well as how they use their PPC. Yeah. And I think it, it potentially shifts the emphasis even more towards PPC because the the ad, with all these things I've just mentioned at the moment, the ads will still always appear above um, those additional bits of information. So it it almost becomes more important to be in the in the paid results because they're going to be right at the very top, you know, above all these things that uh, all these other information that Google's providing internally. Right. Okay. Excellent. So the second topic I wanted to talk to you today about was to do with niching. My audience knows that I am a big fan of niching, that the more niche you are, the easier it is to identify your ideal target customer and therefore 
create marketing messages that resonate with the pain that they're having that you can solve but it also means that you can often charge higher fees because the niche player is a specialist and the generalist is a generalist and you know as I say often if you need knee surgery you're going to go to a knee specialist surgeon you're not going to go to your GP doctor and ask them to carry out the surgery and of course the knee surgeon is going to charge you a lot more money and I know that this is a journey that you've been on with the PPC machine so could you just share a bit about that journey what led you to decide the niche that you're in and some of the benefits that you've seen from being in that niche yeah sure so if you go back a four or five years or so I was I was running a, a larger agency digital agency which dealt with basically whatever whatever clients came through the door really and whatever you know we weren't sector specific or anything um when i set up this business uh, three or four years ago i took the decision then that i only wanted to work with a small number of clients because the business was going to be just me so therefore you know i had to only work with a small number of clients and that was when i started thinking well one of the ways to to you know, focus that down and decide which small number of clients I'm going to work with is to is to look at niching the business in some way. Now, the reality is um, that if I'm doing Google Ads for pretty much any service based business, the the skills and the techniques involved are are basically the same. You know, doing doing Google Ads for an accountant is very much the same as doing Google Ads for a solicitor. You know, but the what I decided to do was to niche into one particular area, um, and I chose financial services. And I'll come on to why I chose that in a minute. But I I chose that because that then allows me to a filter down my my market to a manageable size, but also allows me to be a specialist in that particular sector. Because although the skills involved might be exactly the same, and although from my point of view doing Google ads for a mortgage broker is not much different from doing Google ads for a lawyer. The perception from the client side is that, you know, their industry and their business is always different from everyone else's and they need a specialist in that in that particular sector. So I chose to niche into financial services mainly because um, it was in a it was a world I'd been involved in prior to being in digital marketing. So I mentioned um, back at the beginning that I I learned I started to learn digital marketing when I had a business in a different sector and I said that was financial services I I was um, owned a, a firm of financial advisors and mortgage brokers and so by specialising in that niche now it means two things firstly you know I can kind of talk the same language as my clients um, you know it's a regulated industry I understand you know what that means and the challenges that brings. I, I understand the products and services they're selling. So that, that makes things easy. It makes it easy for me to market their, their products and services because I understand them. And it makes them feel more comfortable that they're dealing with someone who, who, you know, who speaks the same language as them and understands their, their business and their challenges. Um, but it also means as well that it, it becomes easier to build rapport with potential clients as well because we've got this kind of shared, we've got this shared background. You know, they're doing now the stuff that I was doing 15 16 years ago so we've got that kind of thing in common um and i think i think that's really important particularly in you know in a business like mine where it's very much working one-to-one -one with business owners it's important that we you know we understand each other and we get on well and we've got things got things in common so i found it makes a real difference from that point of view and the other um area where it makes a big difference is it actually makes the marketing easier so when we were talking just now about Google Ads and pay per click. One of the things I was going to say then is another way to keep the cost down is to be very specific about who you want to see your ads. And you know, years ago, when I was running training courses on Google Ads, I used to have a couple of slides that demonstrated this. And I'd I'd show a Google Ads search result for if somebody went on and searched for an accountant, and you know, there'd be loads and loads of adverts. And then another where someone went on and searched for accountant who specialises in actors. And you know, then there are only two or three ads. So it, it's the benefits of it are, are those. It makes it easier to market yourself. It makes it easier to um, win new clients, uh, and it you know it makes it easier to deliver the service because you're dealing with the same kinds of people and the same kinds of problems and challenges, you know, with all the clients that you deal with.
yeah absolutely and i guess you know when you when you have a background in that sector you can you can tell a compelling story i mean it's the same with me working with marketing agencies given that i started in my own grew and sold my own marketing agency makes it much more um authentic and engaging for potential clients when they realize that you've been there and done it you've been in the trenches with them and you can empathize with the particular situation they're on in their kind of business's journey as opposed to being a generalist and I guess also for you it means that you can probably be a lot more successful for your clients because like you say you're not competing with so many other people for those keywords yeah exactly and you know I can use um, experiences from you know my own background in this and things I've learned from working with other clients and things like that and bring you know bring it all all together to uh, uh, to mean that you know if someone's in financial services and they work with me they've got a head start over if over competitors of theirs who are working with a more generalist agency. So what would you say to someone who was thinking about niching, probably intellectually understands the benefits of niching, but is running this fear of, well, if I niche my PPC agency to focus on financial services, for example, then I might miss all these other business opportunities. What would you say to that person? I think that's a really common fear and it's it's one that you know I had myself when I went down this route was you know I don't want to be turning business away and whatever I think there's two things to remember firstly if you pick the right kind of niche there's going to be plenty of business available within that niche um, and also just because you've picked a niche doesn't mean that you can't do anything outside that I mean I, I take the view that um I, I focus all my marketing into that niche. So you'll only see me marketing to people like insurance brokers, financial advisors, mortgage brokers, etc. But that doesn't mean I don't have some clients in other sectors because sometimes people get referred to me from other people or, you know, they just hear about me through word of mouth. And if they're the right kind of client, you know, I'll still I'll still take them on. So it doesn't mean you have to push other business away, but it just gives you a, a very clear focus for your for your proactive marketing. Yeah, so so guys, you you sort of heard it here twice now from David and from myself that if you are running that fear, and the reason why I ask that question is because I hear that so often when I talk about niching to people, do what David said, go niche, pin your flag to the mask and say, this is my niche and this is what I do and this is my target customer. Do that in all of your marketing, your website and, and your all your outbound communications and if necessary broaden out from there and as david said it doesn't mean you have to turn away every client that doesn't fit in that niche it just means on a case-by-case -case basis you decide if you feel you could uh, get a good result for that client if you feel they would be a good match to work with you and that they get you and if all those if there's a tick in the box to all those questions then you would take them on so um you know we talked a lot about the benefits of niching and, you know, as I said, one of the fears is that people worry about missing opportunities, but you're probably not winning a lot of those opportunities right now if you're a generalist. So you, my my um, advice is to go niche and broaden out. Don't be broad and try to niche in. It's just, it's too difficult and you look like everybody else. And when you look like everybody else, it becomes a race to the bottom because people will pick the supplier based on whether they're the cheapest or whether they promise ridiculous levels of service and, and both of those are, are hiding to nothing and a, a way to run a stressful um, unprofitable agency so we don't want to do that no definitely and it's it, yeah I very if I'm working within my target niche I very rarely get into um, you know conversations about pricing and can you reduce the price and that kind of thing because people you know people if they are trying to compare me against someone else well, they're comparing against a generalist, not a specialist. So it's immediately obvious why why my fees might be higher than the than the competition. Yeah, and as as we said earlier, guys, if you're if you need knee surgery, you're going to go to a knee specialist. You're not going to go to uh, your GP doctor, and it's the same with PPC or with coaching or with anything else. So niching is definitely the way to go. So David, where can people find out more about you and the PPC machine? Uh, well, there's lots of uh, information and uh, blog articles and free advice on the website, which is theppcmachine.co.uk, uh, or they can connect with me on LinkedIn. But the blog is the main place uh, to get stuff. I mean, if you sign up to the mailing list on there, you can get um, you know updates when, when new articles are published and everything. 
okay so we will put in the show notes a link to david's website a link to david's linkedin address and also a specific link to that case study the dentist case study you mentioned earlier before i let you go david i ask all of my guests this question which is if you could go back in time and give your younger self who was just starting out in business some advice what would it be i think it would be around this idea would be very clear on who it is you want to market to um if i if i'd found i wish i'd discovered the niching concept many many years ago because since i since i started doing that i've you know my it's definitely changed the business for the better um it makes the work more enjoyable um it means i can charge higher fees it means i'm not so stressed running around trying to you know service lots and lots of different clients so i think yeah that would be that would be my advice to my younger self would be find a niche and market market to that niche brilliant advice so guys if you're just starting out in business then take david's advice now so that you don't have to wait a whole number of years before you learn that lesson okay david it's been fantastic talking to you today i think there's some really good value-added content that people can start implementing straight away and it's certainly a podcast topic that is going to get people thinking differently so thanks so much for joining us today oh thanks for having me on rob it's been great So there you have it. I hope you found today's podcast interview with David Miles from the PPC Machine useful. I hope you've got some tips on how to niche your agency, how to use PPC as part of your marketing mix. Now in the next episode of the Agency Accelerator podcast, I'm going to be talking to you about what it takes to run a successful and profitable agency. So I look forward to joining you then in the next episode.